G'day, welcome back to the lab. The latest issue of Magpie magazine came bundled with this free Raspberry Pi for desktop CD. So this means that you can boot the Raspberry Pi operating system Raspbian on your desktop computer. And that's that's super cool if you develop with Raspberry Pi a lot. It means you can have a convenient work environment not tethered to a Raspberry Pi, but still developing in the same environment. So I'm going to show you how to set this up. There is a tutorial in the Magpie magazine, and that goes into changing BIOS settings and actually rebooting your computer into this environment. So that if you want to switch between your native operating system, like Linux, Mac, or Windows, you have to reboot into Raspberry Pi. And I mean, that that works for this kind of system where you know it's completely offline. That's why you've got the CD. But this has kind of inspired me to do a tutorial on how to boot this CD into a virtual machine. Now, of course, if you didn't get the magazine, you can still download the same stuff that's on this CD and follow along. I'll just show you the differences at the end of the video. For now, let's get started. Just a bit of prep, we need to go to virtualbox.org and just download the latest version of VirtualBox. This will work on Mac and Windows just fine. While that's downloading, I've already put my free CD into the uh, CD drive for my computer, so that's come up as G drive. And once your download has finished for VirtualBox, just give it a, uh, just install it and run it. So I'm going to run my already installed version of VirtualBox, and this is the this is the interface that we're greeted with. So here we're going to make a virtual computer just like that. So we're going to hit New, and what's the name for this? I'm going to call this Raspi because it, it's going to look and feel like a Raspberry Pi. Uh, of course, we're under the Linux di distros, and I'm going to select Debian 64-bit. So whatever you want to call the machine, and then Linux with Debian 64-bit. The memory size, I'm going to leave that at the default. We could bring it all the way down to 512 meg. I wonder if that would be like more a more realistic Raspberry Pi. But since we have a computer, if you have RAM to spare, then yeah, I'm just going to leave this at 1024 meg. Uh, yep, we're going to create the virtual hard disk now. So this is going to like carve out a section of your computer's hard drive just for the use of this virtual installation of Raspbian. So I'm going to create that. And yeah, I'll just hit next on the hard disk file type. We'll allow the dynamically allocated hard drive and we'll leave the default starting size at 8 gig. That's, that's pretty sensible. What this means is that if you do need more than 8 gig, then the, uh, then the section reserved for the installation will grow on your hard drive as required. So that, that's quite a flexible option. And yeah, that's as simple as that. We've created a virtual machine, but now we have to tell it how to start up and also configure a few other things. So I'm going to highlight that virtual machine or right click, go to settings. And what do we want? First, we want Okay, so the boot order, it's going to try to boot from the optical disk before the uh, hard disk. That's good because we need to boot from the CD. The display, we don't really have anything to change there. We could change the video memory, but I'm going to leave that for now. Storage, this is where we set the interfaces for our machine. You can see we've got this raspi.vdi controller. That's like the virtual hard drive that we specified before. But we need to attach the optical disk to this virtual machine so that it can run the installer. So I'm just going to select this empty slot here for the, the optical disk uh, icon. And I'm going to select from this icon here, host drive G. The host is the computer we're working on right now. So I'm going to select that. That's fine. What else can we have a look at? Shared folders. Yeah, we, that, that'll, be, that'll be something that we'll come to later, I think. Uh, what else is there to do first up? USB, serial port, network, audio. I think I think that'll do for now. I'm just just having a dive through these to to see if there's anything else that I forgot. I think we might be having a look at this menu once again later on though. But I'm just going to hit OK now, and we've set up our virtual machine. So I'm going to double click on it, and the very first thing that's going to happen is it's going to say, "Hey, I need a CD to boot off." And it, oh no, we, that's right, we already attached G drive. So what we're looking at, I'll just minimize this to clean it up. What we're looking at is the 
information on the CD. This, if we had put this into our computer, changed the BIOS settings and booted from the CD, this is what we'd be looking at. So I want to install the Raspberry Pi desktop x86 on this virtual machine. So I'm going to tab down to install or arrow down to install and just hit OK. Hit enter. These little notifications are from VirtualBox. Uh, I have a American layout keyboard, so I need to go up to American English and hit enter. That way when I use the, the shift three for hash, it doesn't come up as a pound symbol probably. And this will just run and I'll see you in the future when there's something to do. Okay, that took about a moment. So this is where we're gonna select the partition disk. So I'm going to just use the guided entire disk option at the top. And I'm just gonna hit okay for this one as well. And we're gonna put all the files in one partition and that's recommended for new users anyway. So hit enter for that. And I'll say yes, finish partitioning and write changes to disk. So enter for that. Uh, and we just have to say that yes, we want to, to set up these partitions. So yes, write changes to the disks, hit enter, and away it goes again. This will take a, this will only take a few minutes. Okay, about three minutes into that process, we're just getting this option to install the Grub bootloader. I'm going to hit yes on that. And now the device for the bootloader installation, I'm just going to go down to that pre-filled one. I don't want to enter the device manually. If you do accidentally go into that option, you do, you do have an option to go back anyhow. And now I'm just going to hit continue to finish the installation. And I'll, I'll let this run and let you know how long it takes. All right, so that ran for like about half a minute and now we're going through this uh, initial boot sequence automatically. So the installation finished, the screen went black, came up with a, a green kind of uh, BIOS menu almost and then it just started to launch automatically. And here we are again. I've just got a notice from virtual machine from the virtual machine that it's going to capture the mouse, and that's okay. But here we are. This is a pretty familiar environment for most people who are watching this video. This looks a lot like the Raspberry Pi Raspbian desktop, and we have pretty much all the trimmings that we had on the Raspberry Pi. There are a few things missing, like Wolfram, I think, and a, a few other things. But by and large, this is a complete. Uh, and seamless Raspberry Pi. So there are a few things that we have to do from here. This virtual machine doesn't know it's a virtual machine. It's living inside this window, but it doesn't know it. And what that means is, if we want to resize this window to expand that desktop, it can't do it yet. So we're going to have to install a few packages. So I'm just going to pull this over to the side and bring up my resources. I'll just open up the terminal first. So we'll open up the terminal and run sudo apt get update. And while that's updating, I'll just grab the long installation line that I need. So what, we, what we're gonna do is download a few packages onto our virtual machine that kind of allow it to interact with Oracle VirtualBox in a way that will allow us to copy files back and forth and even use like the, the clipboard. So we can copy and paste text back and forth, which is super useful if you're you know copying long commands like the one that I'm gonna have to manually type out for instance. So once this is finished, which it has, we're just gonna execute this line so that the virtual machine knows that it's virtual and that it's running inside an Oracle VM. So I'm gonna run sudo apt install uh, I'm going to do apt get install virtual box guest dkms uh, space virtual box guest x11 and Linux headers for you name tack r and we'll let that run. Uh, oh, VirtualBox is not a real thing. My apologies. What have I done? VirtualBox. Ah, uh, I've put in one too many. See, this is exactly why we want that copy and paste functionality because I have just, I've got, got this wrong twice. Finally, I get the, the uh, notice that I am gonna download about 11 and a half meg of packages. So I'm just gonna hit yes on that and wait for it to finish. 
Actually, while that's going, I think I can get started with the next step. So the things we have to do are enable uh, the clipboard, the shared clipboard, so we can copy and paste text back and forth, and also enable sharing a file with the, with the virtual Raspberry Pi so that we can share from our host machine files really easily with the Raspberry Pi. That's just great for workflow. So the first thing we'll want is to go to machine, actually devices, let's start with devices, and we'll grab the shared clipboard option and set that to bi-directional. So that means that we can copy from and to the Raspberry Pi, either from the Pi to the computer or vice versa, bi-directional. Okay, that's it for the clipboard. Now we're going to do the file sharing. So I'll just first add our user to the VirtualBox guest file sharing. So that's sudo add user pi to vbox sf. And you should see that the user pi was added. I've already tried this once before, so I've, I've got a, a warning saying that pi was already a member of that. And now we can set up the, fol the folder that we want to share. I guess I should, uh, I guess I should save, I guess I should reboot rather. So I'll do a sudo reboot. And while that's going, actually I probably should have shut down. I won't be able to modify. So I'm just gonna uh, sh power off the machine and go to the settings for VirtualBox again. And this is where we can find the shared folders and I'm just going to add a folder. So the folder path, I'm just gonna create a new folder on my desktop, I think. So that's going to be, I'm gonna call that test share and I'll select that folder. So the, the path, uh, the folder is our desktop test share and I'll set that up to auto mount and hit OK. Now in that folder that's just appeared, I'm going to create a, just a dummy file so we can make sure everything works. So I'll call this text and I'll open it up and just put in one, two, three, save that, close it, minimize that. Uh, yep, yeah, we can close our settings and open up our Raspberry Pi virtual machine again. So just to reiterate, we've set up the clipboard sharing and we've set up file sharing. So now we can transfer files between our Raspberry Pi and our computer. Let's just close the loop on all that and make sure everything works. Close those notices. So the first thing that we did was actually tell the machine that it's a virtual machine. So we should be able to resize this desktop and indeed we can. If you tried to do this before, and I think I showed you, it didn't resize, but now, now it knows that it lives within this window. So we can, we can, you know, we can go properly full screen on this. You can see that bar hasn't extended out, but once the, once the display refreshes, everything's fine. I'm just going to go back to a, a windowed mode for that for now, because I want to have a look at that clipboard functionality. That's super useful. So I'm just going to copy this one, two, three text from our share and I'll be, I should be able to paste that into the terminal. So for really long commands like the one that I had to do before, that's now going to be super easy. We can just copy them from wherever we're copying them into our terminal directly. And most importantly, I think, is that we have that shared directory. So I can go to the file manager. Now if I go up to root and under media, wherever that is, media, we have this new directory called sf underscore test share. So the, <clears throat> excuse me, the shared directory is prefixed with sf and if we open that there's that text file we created and indeed it has the the contents one two three so i'm going to i'm going to close my my test file on my host machine and i'm just going to edit this with four five six i'll save that on the raspberry pi close it off reopen it and you can see that on the host machine the file has been modified so i mean this is this is wonderful. This, this test share uh, directory now is kind of this, this beautifully elegantly mounted uh, portal between the two machines. So if we, if we do some, some cool video stuff on one or the other, we can move big files back and forth really quickly. You don't have to worry about trying to do anything over like a virtual network or anything. It's all built right into the file systems. So you can put a, a shortcut for media SF test share on your desktop and you're ready to go. So that just about wraps things up for this tutorial. We took the free Raspberry Pi desktop uh, CD and we installed it onto a virtual machine. So now we have this really convenient development environment where we can develop Raspberry Pi related tasks and also do our regular computing all on the same machine. Now, if you didn't have the CD and you wanted to download the same information that's on it, I'll show you how we can do that.
So opening a browser, we can navigate to rpf.io forward slash x86 ISO. And if we hit enter on that, what we can download is a virtual CD. So we have virtual computers, we could also have virtual CDs. And you can see I've already downloaded that, that ISO or virtual disk image file into my downloads folder. So rather on the very first boot in the settings, remember in setting the system up for storage, we selected a G drive, which was a CD drive. That was actually a virtual CD drive in this case. Rather than selecting a real CD to boot from, we could choose a virtual optical disk file and we could go to downloads and select this file that we downloaded and boot from that instead. It's exactly the same thing. Whether you're booting from the CD or a disk image, it's the same data and VirtualBox is happy working with both. So when you're setting up the machine, if you don't have a CD drive, you can do this step instead and the rest of the tutorial will proceed as normal. I'll catch you next time.